Parasternal long axis view is usually the first view obtained during echocardiography. It is obtained by keeping the transducer in the left parasternal region with the subject in the left lateral position. The beam cuts the heart in its base to apex axis. Aortic root and valve, left ventricle, left atrium, mitral valve, cardiac tendine, papillary muscles and interventricular septum as well as part of the right ventricle are imaged in this view. Parasternal long axis view without annotation. Cross section of the descending aorta is seen posterior to the left atrium. The coronary sinus can be imaged if it is dilated and will be visible in the atrioventricular groove. A dilated coronary sinus would suggest a persistent left superior vena cava draining into the coronary sinus. In this still image, the mitral leaflets are closed and aortic leaflets are in open position. M mode examination was the initial mode of echocardiography to begin with and has been largely superseded by other modes of echocardiography. It is still being used for taking measurements of the left ventricle to calculate the ejection fraction. The M mode cut is taken at the caudal level for this purpose. The interventricular septum moves downwards in systole towards the left ventricular cavity. Left ventricular posterior wall moves anteriorly towards the left ventricular cavity in systole. The systolic and diastolic measurements are taken using computerized calipers in the echocardiograph and the software package calculates the dimensions and ejection fractions. The fact that the interface between two different media produces the best echoes is demonstrated in the pattern of the interventricular septum. Both upper and lower margins are echo dense while the intervening tissue is less echo dense. Vertical axis in this image is the depth and horizontal axis is the time. Important measurements taken are LVPWS left ventricular posterior wall systolic, LVIDS left ventricular internal dimension systolic, IVSS interventricular septum systolic, LVPWD left ventricular posterior wall diastolic, IVSD interventricular septum diastolic, EDV and diastolic volume, ESV and systolic volume, EF ejection fraction. Ejection fraction by M mode echo, though often used, has a lot of limitations being a one dimensional measurement. 2D and 3D methods to calculate ejection fraction are better. Parasternal short axis view showing right ventricular outflow tract, pulmonary artery, and aorta. Right ventricular outflow tract and pulmonary artery are seen curving around the aorta to form the circle and sausage appearance. Pulmonary artery is identified by its bifurcation into left and right pulmonary arteries. Color Doppler shows a blue flow directed away from the transducer. A tiny reverse flow of pulmonary regurgitation can be seen in most individuals. It appears like a tiny flame like jet directed upwards from the pulmonary valve in the closed position. Short axis imaging at the ventricular level can be obtained by directing the beam downwards from the previous position. It is used to assess the cross section of the mitral valve in mitral stenosis to quantify the mitral valve area. The left ventricular wall motion abnormalities can be visualized well in this view. A portion of the right ventricle is also visible beyond the interventricular septum. The left ventricle has a circular shape in this view and the right ventricle is semilunar with the septum convex to the right ventricle. A pical four chamber view is obtained from the apex of the heart as the name implies. It gives a good image of all four cardiac chambers as well as the mitral and tricuspid valves. The interatrial and interventricular septa are seen in this view. The tricuspid valve is attached more distally to the septum than the mitral valve and the region in between is called the atrioventricular septum which separates the left ventricle from the right atrium. Dropouts in the interatrial septum are common in this view as in this case without any atrial septal defect. This is because the ultrasound beam is parallel to the interatrial septum in this view and the thin region at the fossa valleys is often seen as an echo dropout. A subcostal view should be obtained to image the interatrial septum before concluding that the dropout is an atrial septal defect. 
A good left to right flow demonstrated by color Doppler in this view can also be used to confirm the presence of an atrial septal defect in this view, especially if the subcostal view is suboptimal as in some adults. A slight tilt from the apical four chamber view opens the arctic root and it is called the apical five chamber view. Apical five chamber view is used to measure aortic flow and the gradient in aortic stenosis. Subcostal four chamber view is excellent for the visualization of the interatrial septum. Subcostal four chamber view shows right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle and the left ventricle. The central portion of the interatrial septum is thinner than the rest of it and represents the fossa ovalis region. Suprasternal view is often the last view obtained during echocardiography. The suprasternal view images the aortic arch and its branches and the proximal descending aorta. This view is used to detect coarctation of aorta and measure gradients across the coarctation. Ascending aorta can be imaged with a tilt and ascending aortic flow is measured in aortic stenosis to get the gradient across the aortic wall. This is sometimes useful when the gradient is not picked up well in the apical five chamber view. Here is the citation for a good article with line drawings illustrating various echocardiographic views and orientation of cardiac chambers in each view. Free full text is available online.